and welcome to the Center for Threat Informed Defense's Leadership Spotlight Series. Today, we will welcome Fortinet to discuss Attack Flow 2. My name is Maggie McAlpine, and I'm the Cyber Engagement Lead for the Center. And I'm Derek Mankey, Vice President of Global Threat Intelligence with Fortinet's FortiGuard Labs, also responsible for our threat alliances and industry partnerships. Thank you so much for joining us today, Derek. Um, I was wondering if you could start us off with a brief description of the project. Yeah, so Attack Flow 2 is building on Attack Flow, which uh, we had published earlier in the year. It's personally one of my favorite projects. I think it's a very, very interesting, very uh, impactful. So we can discuss that today. Really, it's it's looking at, um, so we all know about the MITRE ATT&CK framework. This is looking at flows, so real world data of how attacks are moving throughout uh, you know, the, the matrix, right? Going from left to right, how our techniques change through tactics, identifying choke points, looking at a holistic picture and view to really start understanding these over time, mind you, as well, too. Um, so actually putting real data into the model. So just to start off, what industry challenge would you say that this project is addressing specifically? Challenge, challenges. I actually think there, there's more than one, which is a good thing, of course. Um, to name a couple um, is uh, one, uh, skills gap, right? We don't have enough resources. There's, there's a big data problem out there. Um, how do we actually start analyzing, filtering out the noise, um, reducing the complexity? That's a massive problem in itself. Uh, um, you know, attack flow and attack flow two certainly helps to um, address that. But another one too that we don't often talk about enough is um, reducing, fr- uh, you know, creating more friction points and really reducing the speed of the attack. Right, because attackers, as we know, adversaries are moving freely through their attack movements. The more we can identify these choke points, um, it's like molasses, right? It actually slows them down throughout their flows. And another nice to have on this also is how do we articulate these, uh, you know, the the concept of risk to a business discussion and up to the board level as well too. That's another um, challenge that this helps address. Absolutely. Those are critical challenges I hear over and over again in the industry. Um, can we go a little more into like, how does it solve these problems? Yeah. So a couple of things, first of all, we're not, you know, with um, attack flow, we're not talking about millions of IOCs, right? Um, I'm going to refer to the classic uh, pyramid of pain model here, right? It's really focused at the top. That's what this is about looking at the TTPs and the connections between TTPs. So it helps with the prioritization. Cause again, you're not living at that bottom level. You're not looking, you know, you don't have a million malware hashes and a million uh, URLs to look at. You're actually looking at TTP specifically. So it helps to build a holistic picture. You can zoom out to look at that uh, in a wider model to look at um, the flows again, right? And start to prioritize response to these because it allows you to really look at the, the habits of attackers. What assets are they going after? Not just the, the what, but the how. And then building a, uh, you know, prioritizing that when it comes to security, cybersecurity positioning and posture. So that's the blue team defensive model. Um, you know, another way that this is helping to do that is uh, uh, we've actually created a builder for this. It's a visualization tool. It's not easy just to write in sticks version two language, of course. So having a builder, having tools to actually do that um, is, is actually how it's helping with the, um, the skills gap issue as well too, reducing cycles. Mm-hmm. And and all that reduction of cycles and time and energy for defenders, obviously, just absolutely critical. Uh, life's hard enough as it is. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so specifically, I mean, how is your organization leveraging this and applying the work? Yeah, so a couple of things, right? One, um, we're building libraries and knowledge base with this because this is something that lives over time. Of course, we've been hands on already with this. So, um, you know, when it comes to play, like we're essentially leveraging this for playbooks, right? In both ways, we're leveraging this for playbooks. Uh, to, to build this out for the um, adversary. So the red team playbook, looking obviously that is the attack flow, right? Mapping this to campaigns. We're starting to use this for real world data as we actually look through campaigns and basically piggyback, piggybacking this onto our existing analyst flow, right? Because we're already doing that work, analyzing the camp- these campaigns. We're already mapping attacks to MITRE ATT&CK. Now, how do we actually add that additional layer of flow on there. So that's what we're doing essentially is building out the adversary playbook. But then, as I said, as we um, do this, we gain more expertise, we gain more knowledge into these attack flow and patterns, and we can start to identify solutions. I mean, we're a security vendor, right? So as we um, discover more of the flows and, you know, common assets that uh, these flows are hitting, we can start to actually prioritize that and build the defensive, the blue team playbook and SOC security operations center guides for that. 
So coming back a little bit from the project itself and its goals, uh, can you describe a little bit the collaboration project uh, process with um, the Center for Threat and Form Defense, the uh, collaborative R&D environment, and uh, just what that looked like in the production of Attack Flow 2? Yeah, the collaboration is fantastic. Um, th this is my favorite hat to wear is this, is the industry hat, as I said earlier. And, um, you know, we've had regular calls, so it's, you know, really putting skin in the game, right? Having not just ourselves, of course, but other uh, other resources, shared resources, experts in the in, in the field. That's just been phenomenal to do. Um, on top of that, as I said, the exercise we're going through is not just us. I mentioned how we're actually looking at building these libraries, uh, modeling these after attack flows. It's a classic Venn diagram. We see what we see, but comparing notes, getting on these calls, actually holistically, you know, working together as one unit um, on these collaborative calls and actually looking at uh, real world use cases, right? That's what we did. We focused on actual use cases to build the sample flows. And um, that's just a great exercise in itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and we're happy to hear, of course, that you've enjoyed the process and that it's been, you know, um, productive and favorable to you. But um, in addition to that, um, has this participation in the center expanded on your goals and helped your organization's expertise and capabilities beyond this, you know, project or in general? Yeah, ab absolutely. So going through this exercise again, one, we gain, I mean, this is, this is a new model, right? So it's um, obviously a, a not for our analysts that are hands-on with it. That's one aspect, but we've also... Uh, you know, product support for this is also equally as important. So it's also not just the analysts, but it's expanding that scope and insight to our product management teams so that we can stay on top of this as we identify those tool points again, uh, gain further insights for these flows and libraries that are happening. So it really uh, is an eye opener. And this is one of those, um, it's not a snapshot, right? It's already been a great experience, but we're actually just getting started with this. If you think about it, the, the project was just published. Again, this is something that um, is going to live over time. And um, as we build out that uh, expert expertise and insight over time, it's just gonna get better, right? We're gonna have more vetting of data, more use cases, more flows out there, more integrations as well too. Absolutely. Um, so actually just dovetailing from that, uh, one of the things that the, you know, is the center's goal is our key approach um, with these projects is that they become freely available to the world, uh, which, you know, at least for me is, you know, a really big part of why I love working with the center. But um, how is like supporting uh, the community and this kind of investment in it um, and these resources value, value, valuable to you and your organization? Oh, this, this is critical. This is critical, Maggie. This goes back to the skills gap uh, issue I was talking about before. We have to make this widely available. We need industry adoption. This is how we do it, right? We, we put it up on GitHub as an example, make it freely available. Uh, we have industry-wide adoption. Why? Because A, that, that gives more education and awareness for this. B, it allows us to uh, collectively, outside of just who started, I mean, this is a nucleus where we started on, on this project. We need that industry uh, collaboration, really an ecosystem that's built um, to be able to, um, to, to compare real-time notes, to adopt the model, to actually build more flows, more insights using the builder um, that's been now made available as well too. Um, so those tools being made uh, you know, um, industry-wide globally is critical. It really does help to address that, that skills gap. And, and of course, being free, <laughs> Nobody has an excuse, right? Everybody can pick this up and start using it, which is a great thing. So Derek, um, from there, how does this project in particular help the target audience? Yeah, so this really applies to, the nice thing about this, Maggie, is it applies to more than one audience. Because um, if you look at the nature of this, it's built off Sticks version two, so it can be quite technical. It's actually looking um, at a more granular level as to what assets are being impacted, how the techniques are being chained together, what choke points there are. So that's a very analyst focused, you know, uh, SOC analyst uh, level audience application. But the nice thing about this, as I said, is that it also provides a holistic picture. So if you zoom out and just look at the key points from that, this absolutely becomes a CISO conversation up to that C level of the C suite, which again is hard to articulate a lot of the times. But because of the visualizations and because of showing that big picture and identifying particularly the assets, um, that can easily translate into a risk and a level conversation with CISOs as well. Yeah, and that's just absolutely critical to be able to make that translation upstream and to really get that buy-in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So thank you so much for joining us today, Derek, at the Center for Threat and Form Defense uh, Leadership Spotlight with that focus on attack flow too. All right. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much, Maggie. And thanks for all the great work from the center and all the participants as well. Absolutely.